What's up everybody, it's The Bentis and we're back with another YouTube video. Today we're gonna be reacting to the most viewed braces video of all time called How Braces Work. It has 44 million views. So we're gonna break it down and we're gonna let you know exactly what's going on in each clip. We've got a bike, we're opening it. Putting some bite props on there. Caps? This is weird, okay, intruding the back teeth there. This is not braces. On that one, what I'm guessing is that's not necessarily braces. That's something that we can do in early treatment if you're a kid, okay? So something we can put special retainers or things like that with buildups of plastic on the top of the teeth to intrude those teeth. So when you're biting down on something like that, it's pushing those two teeth away from each other, lifting them up and settling your bite. So I think that's what they were going for with that one, but I don't know, let's keep on going. Yeah, some teeth here. Looks like some baby teeth. We're losing some teeth. Some permanent teeth are coming in. Oh, and then we're putting braces on them. And we're slowly pulling back the back teeth first. And then the next teeth after that. And then the next teeth after that. And then we're gonna straighten up the front teeth, I bet. Yeah, straightening them up. Boom! So let's start at the beginning, okay? You had those teeth and then you started losing those baby teeth. Now, if you lose baby teeth early, they're actually smaller than the permanent teeth that come in in their place. So those permanent teeth were coming in and they were starting to get crooked because there wasn't enough room for them. And then they put the braces on, you saw that part, and what they were doing was what we call anchorage, okay? Take the biggest teeth in the back and we wanna pull them one by one. It's almost like tug of war. There's two people against one tooth and they bring those back and now it's three people against one tooth and they bring those back and then those teeth come back Back. and then you can go ahead and unravel the last bit of crowding and get your teeth back to looking good. So that was a good example of just kind of an overall case of braces from start to finish. So I wonder what else we've got here. This is crazy so far. All right, you've got some rubber bands to pull that jaw back and then the opposite direction, pulling them forward. Okay, so what you saw there was class two and class three rubber bands. Okay, so class two, you watch far out like that. You notice that they had the rubber bands from here to down here. So every time you open your mouth, you're pulling these guys back and these guys forward, fixing that bite issue. On that second one, you can see that they're class three. And this is the same thing. That's what we call an underbite. Look like a bulldog. So if you ever seen anybody like that, that's how we fix that. Rubber bands on the lower to the upper. And every time you open your mouth, you're going this back and this forward, fixing that bite. So a really good example so far. Let's keep it going. Alrighty, looks like we have a bonded retainer is what I'm guessing. Okay, see they're putting something on the back there. Ah, so that's blue stuff is called etchant. That's what we have to do first to get the tooth structure ready for it. Put the bonding agent on it first, and then they're putting the glue on top of that, and that will get it ready and prepared to put on the permanent retainer. And then they're gonna light cure it. The light is what actually solidifies that glue and locks it into place. All right, they're bringing it forward, looking at it, and you're all set and good to go. Oh, looking good. Okay, so basically what permanent retainers are for? You probably have seen the clear plastic retainers or the Holly retainers, the ones with the metal and the acrylic on them. These are permanent retainers. Now, normally we only do these on the top if you had a big gap because when you close that gap, the tissue force in between presses and it's almost like a spring and it wants to shoot it back open. So we use a permanent retainer on the back bonded to your teeth so that that gap doesn't open back up. Now that being said, you still have to worry about stuff because if you bite down and you break one of those little things off on the inside, it can open up. And the reason why we don't do too much on the upper is because that's right where you bite into. So if you're eating food and stuff, it's really easy to break that top one off. We do it on the bottom all the time, not so much on the top, only if they have a gap. Let's keep going. All right, so it looks like we had an open bite. You saw how it closed down, and now they're using elastics in different areas. So on that one, when you have an open bite for somebody, you know, you're gonna try and bring it down as best you can with the brackets and the wires. But at the end, you need certain elastics. So every time you open up, it'll pull those together. And then in the front, open up, it'll pull those together. That's fixing an open bite. Normally those are caused by tongue thrusting and stuff of your tongue sticking out through the middle, always forcing those things together. That's a pretty good representation of how we would fix an open bite. Alrighty, we're putting a wire in and it looks like we're trying to intrude the lowers, bringing them down. So that one was a pretty simple one. Also here, trying to grab something and pull it down using another rubber band to pull it. Okay, we got a big crowded case here. 
Okay, so now I'm gonna stop it right there. So as you saw, there was another tooth in front of that lower tooth, okay? So that lower tooth should be here, but it was actually here. And if you notice, they opened the bite to get everything past there. That's really common. That's what we call a cross bite. And so what we do is we put these little pieces of glue on your back teeth or on behind the front teeth to lift them up. And then that way we can get those teeth out of the way. Because if they're still in front, there's nowhere they can move. They can't move back. So we have to lift them up and then move it and get it across. We're opening the bite and we have a really long tooth. He's doing a little bit of enamel pasty, shaving that away. Okay, and it's slowly bringing it down. They pop off the bracket, reposition it to drag it down the rest of the way. Okay, now that's close, but it's not as accurate as what we would really do in real life. We wouldn't shape that much tooth structure off, only a tiny bit. If there was a huge difference between one tooth and the other tooth, more than likely, if you had to shave off that much, you would probably just add glue to the other front tooth instead of taking away so much teeth on the other side. But we do remove teeth. I call it Hollywood personally, but it's called enameloplasty. And when they took the tooth off and they repositioned it, that's really common. We do that all the time with brackets. We repositioned it up a little bit higher so that wire could go up, grab it, and drag it down. I liked that one, that was good. Okay, so here it looks like they're showing you how to do a floss threader, which is a type of way to floss your braces. So you go on both sides, you do a C-shape, up, down, up, down, thread it through, floss up, down, up, down, Cool, basic flossing with braces. I still recommend an ortho pick. I think it works way better for braces, so much faster and easier. You can just pop, 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 pop all the way through instead of having to thread all this stuff like crazy going through. We have a really deep bite there, okay? You see how deep that lower bite is? Okay, so what they're doing is they're putting some topical gel on there that numbs the area. I'm guessing they're gonna put a tad in there, that's my guess. Yep, there they are. Little mini screw tads that actually screw into the bone so we can grab those teeth and lift it up. So you've probably seen people with really gummy smiles. So when they smile, you see a lot of gum tissue. So we put these tads up there to physically pull the teeth up and resorb away the bone as it goes up to get rid of that gummy smile and bring those up. It's really hard to do this without some type of anchorage into the bone, and that's where those tads come in. They screw into the bone, you can drag up, grab them, and those teeth have no choice but to go up. The force is just too great, and they can't do anything about it. So that's why we really love tads and aspect of gummy smiles is great. So let's see how they finish this out. So they take it out, close, it's fixed, looks good. Now you don't have the deep bite anymore. That's good, that's good. So we got that same tad here, and now they're gonna add a spring to the tad. So this is to bring back that canine. It basically, there was a tooth removed and taken out, and we have to pull that back. So in this case, they're using it to close all that space. Okay, this next one, we're opening it up. They're removing a tooth on both sides. It looks like a molar. They're taking two of the molars out. Oh no, those are baby teeth. Those are actually the baby E's. What you saw taken out was actually not a molar. That was your last baby tooth. We call it the E. The letters are how we differentiate baby teeth. Numbers one through 32 is how we differentiate permanent teeth. So what you saw was there was you lost those last baby teeth, okay? And then you lost them a little bit early. So those other two teeth came together and you ended up losing that space. So now the permanent tooth is starting to come in and it doesn't have enough room. So this is how we deal with that. So what they do is they add a little spring in between and we push it away from each other slowly. These are called open coil springs. They're super common. And now you see that second premolar has plenty of room to come in. So that's how we deal with that early loss of that baby tooth where we don't have enough space. So remember how I said that you lost the baby tooth early and so that space collapsed. The thing they put in there the second time is what we call a TPA, a transpalatal arch appliance that actually holds that space for you. So even if you lose those teeth early, we put this thing in there with a wire that goes on the roof of your mouth that basically holds that space so things don't collapse and then that permanent tooth can just drop right down in, no springs needed, possibly no braces needed. Okay, so we got a bite here. Let's see what happens. It looks like we still have those baby teeth in the back. Okay, they're putting in a retainer and that retainer has the same type of thing on the front. So at the very beginning, you saw those ones on the back that put these guys together. Now they had a deep bite, so what they did was they put a retainer with a little wedge of a plastic here on the front. And so what that does is you bite down here, 
and you have this big opening in the back and that allows those teeth to come down opening your bite without braces. This is called phase one therapy and it's done when you're a kid before to hopefully have you not need braces in the future. Okay, so here's that tongue thrust I was talking about. The tongue has been sticking out. They now put a tongue guard in there so that the tongue can't go through anymore and now it's stopping the tongue from coming through. That's actually a really important thing that I see all the time is tongue thrusting. People who are just naturally, they swallow like this and they always stick their tongue through every time they swallow. And that little force over time, over and over again, opens up that bite until it looks like that where it's wide open and the tongue coming out, right? And so at that point, it's become really hard to fix. So what we do is we put a tongue crib in there, which is an appliance that basically stops that tongue from pushing forward. And slowly as it closes, we move that tongue crib down so you, can get, you can't get your tongue through and it closes all the space up until it's back. And it actually works really good. Your lips are really good at pushing and pulling everything back to where it needs to be when you get your tongue out of the way. Now, that being said, you have to fix your swallow because if you fix it, take that out and your tongue goes right back to doing that, it will open right back up. So we teach people a little trick. Put a lifesaver at the roof of your mouth and then you hold it in the center and you watch TV and you just, you keep it there and you swallow until it dissolves. You do that every single night and then it will train your tongue to swallow back in the right spot. All right, next thing up, looks like some headgear. Okay, this is kind of a weird headgear appliance view. <laughs> so this is what you would call a quad helix type appliance. It basically expands out the roof of your mouth, getting it wider, so then you have more room for those permanent teeth to come in. Hopefully getting it to a point where you might not need braces when you're older. The most viewed video ever on YouTube, 44 million views, and we just explained it all for you guys. If you guys like this video, let me know. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate you. Comment down below what you thought was the craziest part, and if you want braces. And also, remember to subscribe and hit that subscribe button. I love you guys so much, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.